Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of my tutorial for my box pocket folio album for Country Craft Creations using Cartabella's Summer Market Paper Collection. Uh, this video is for the patterning of the inside and outside of the album and adding my decorating. The patterning part will be fast forwarded, so it is a faster speed. Uh, you can skip through that if you want to, just get to the decorating part. Also, if you're looking for the uh, tutorial part on how to add the <clears throat> inside magnet flaps here on the right side, uh, it is in this video, adding the cardstock flaps and the decorating and the pattern and the decorating. You will find that at 34 minutes, 53 seconds. So you can fast forward to that if you need that for this construct construction of your album. It is added on after everything is patterned. So let's get on to the decorating of the and finishing this album thing. ready to add our patterned paper to the inside of our little folio. We're going to do the outside last. I have pre-cut everything on my patterned papers. I am using Cartabella's Summer Market for the patterned paper. And then I'm also using some solids from Textured cardstock from Simple Stories, the color vibe, Simple Stories in the light colors. So I'm using some of that. You could use any uh, lighter cardstock colors that you might have or you want to pick up for that collection if you're using the same collection. Um, I'm going to do it a little different than I have done before. I pre like I said, I pre cut everything. So I have them all cut and labeled where they go. I think I've got everything cut. And I've clipped them together. And before someone asks, these are these little clips are sewing clips that you use for sewing that you can pick up at different sewing locations or online. So I've got all this pre-cut ready to go. I need to pick out my ink that I want to ink the edges and then we'll get ready to do this. Now I will probably I will add the cut guide either down in the description so you have to click on show more to see it all or there will be a link to a PDF file online that you can uh, download and print up. So that will be in the description too. I don't know at this time which one I will do. I am not going to give all the measurements I don't think online. I have them labeled for me so I know where they go and the sizes. But uh, to save some time I'm going to just speed up the video so there'll be no talking. Maybe a little music in the background. I don't know. And uh, just speed through this so that you can see me putting the pattern papers on because you may be using different pattern papers. So the cutting guide is going to help you with that. You may want a, a wider margin or narrow. I'm going to, I usually do uh, a 16th of an inch around the edge. But this time I've decided to do an eighth of an inch around the edges um, to conserve paper. This was to, uh, so that I could cut the actual width smaller for the six inch sections instead of having to waste a lot of paper because I only had one of each pattern sheet. So uh, I'm going to go get some ink. I've decided we'll since I've got the craft paper, I'm going to use sepia in the Color Philosophy Prima ink colors. And I don't use an applicator for my inks. I just ink straight from the pad. So I'm going to start on this left side first here where the photo flips are. So I have my paper pre-cut. So I'm going to be inking and then gluing them in. You can um, uh, use whatever adhesive you want, tape runner, uh, score tape, or glue. I love to use the art glitter glue. It gives me a little bit of time for wiggle room. You do have to burnish. Now it's going to be a little more difficult with this already assembled but you can open areas up and go ahead and do that. So uh, this first piece that I have, I'm going to open it up, is the inside left. And if you're, I know people have a hard time choosing what patterns go with which, but if you're using the collection, they pretty much all go together. And it's a matter of a personal uh, what you like. Don't waste all your time 
uh, trying to figure out what you want. And I'm just now noticing here where these uh, pieces are put in that they're kind of going to show when you put your pattern paper, paper in. If you're okay with that, then you go ahead and do that. Otherwise, if you're not, take your cardstock and cut you a piece. So this would be um, six inches wide by seven and not quite a half, should be almost a half, just under seven and a half tall and glue that down to get that these ridges covered. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll be back with a speeded up version of adding in my pattern paper. Also you're going to want to um, put paper in your inside spine and then these areas of your the gusset areas, I guess you would call them, you might want to cover that. So these are going to be 3 8 inch wide by the width. And this this one's going to be 7 8 I'm going to cut all mine. Those are not cut yet. I'm going to cut those and add those on last so I can use my scraps of paper. And I'm not cutting into anything. Okay, so I'm going to go cut me a piece here, cardstock, and glue that in. And then I'll start patterning the paper. See ya. Okay, so I glued this one in, so I like that much better. It makes it smoother there. For the patterned paper, I've got my ink, and I am ready to put patterned paper in. And again, like I said, I'm going to speed up the camera so it doesn't take a long time to upload, or a lot of time. That way, you can just kind of uh, move forward through this if you don't want to watch it. And so, I've inked that one. I'm going to put that one down, and then I will also put the other one down. So, I will. Slow this down when I get to the decorating part and decorating the outside cover. Okay, so there's all the pages and pieces patterned. Let me pat a little bit here on the corner here. So there's the pocket, the flaps, and this side, this side, like that. And all the insides, we have the left side. I, have a, I did add a magnet closure that's optional for you. 
it flips down and then we have all the little flips in here in the inside so there's that and this goes down they just barely overlap it just helps it to lay flatter okay so next we'll be ready to um, do these sections here after we pattern the cover it brings out the different colors in the paper so let's get ready to go ahead and add our pattern pa uh, paper to the front and back and the spine. So again, I pre-cut those and the measurements are in your in the cutting guide down below. This is an extra piece called, cut four and a quarter by four and a quarter that I may use in some of the decorating. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to ink these three. So I'm going to use the yellow check. I was able to cut that out of scraps. With the spine and these patterns I like to make my album covers the front and the back the same you can do them different if you want it's just depending on what you like I have done them different occasionally but I find that I tend to pick the same print for the front and the back so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one on This has a wider border all the way around because I wanted to make sure I was able to just cut it out at six inches wide so as not to have to use a whole piece of pattern paper just for this cover. So I got both pieces out of one piece. So burnish that down. Now, I may put a ribbon closure on mine, which will help with this coming out any. See how that can come out? So I will add that afterwards and then put this pattern paper, this printed paper here, like over it, the ribbon, and then I'll put something on the back to hold the ribbon. So you can decide that even after you've patterned your, uh, your book. You don't have to decide on your ribbon closure right away and then have it in your way while you're decorating the inside. Burnish that down. And it was a little more difficult to pattern this and burnish, as you see in my video, speed up video, when all of it's together. So it definitely is if you can plan ahead uh, once you see mine, how it goes together, and you can plan ahead and add your pattern paper before actually assembling your folio, it will be much easier for you. Do the spine right back here. Spine. It's a little closer. There we go. And burnish that down. This is beautiful paper collection. So if you want something bright and summery, fun with some lemonade, and campers and bicycles, uh, some of you may think, well, you didn't use any bicycles in this album. No, I didn't because we don't ride bicycles. Just don't. Not anymore. So I didn't feel like I needed them in my book, but I do love vintage campers. And my daughter owns a vintage camper and then we have a camper. So camper for me was what worked for me. So you'll choose the patterns that will work for you. Okay, so now we're ready to cut. I'm going to pull out my scraps and cut some strips here, and I'll come back and we'll pattern that. From my scraps, I have cut strips. I have four that are seven eighths wide by seven and a quarter long or tall. I have eight that are three eighths wide by seven and a quarter tall, and then I have four that are three eighths tall by five and three quarters wide, but this is a print that doesn't matter on the direction. So let's move all these aside. I'm going to go ahead and I've already inked them all. 
and I'm going to start gluing them into the spaces. For example, this one will go right here. Now this will help to stabilize these uh, sections as well. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the camera and put these all in.
Okay, so we've got all the edges covered except for that quarter inch. If you feel like you need to cover just these two here, they're the quarter inch. I don't think you have to, but that's an option if you want to do that. I'm not going to do mine. So uh, everything's patterned now, and we're ready to start some decorating. Okay, and I'd have to decide on how I want to close this. So it should have, a magnet would have been nice, but sometimes, you know, magnets you don't have enough or you don't want to use them in everything. So I think I'm going to devise a type of closure for this. Um, I may use a magnet and cover another piece of paper in there or something. So uh, I'll be doing that when I decorate. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull out different things and do some decorating and share that with you. When I decorate on the inside of an album, I don't always go in order. I just go with what I see and put it where I think it will look good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to start building inside with some decorating to see if this will uh, help keep this in line without having to have a closure. And then if I need to add a closure, I will. So I'm going to open up here to this first right side flap on the inside. And I've cut another flap and you want to cut it. You can use any scrap that you have that matches papers that you have, but I cut mine to four and a half wide by five and a half tall. And then I scored the four and a half side at a half inch to get me a hinge. And this is going to attach right in here. And then I will cover this hinge up. So I'm going to uh, decorate this first. So here on the front, I've cut a mat. This one measures three and three quarters by five and a quarter. Now the decorating measurements will not be in the cutting guide because this is all going to depend on your scraps and what you have left over. So there's no need to be cutting into new papers to do this. So you need to use what you have on hand. And so yours may be different sizes, but this will give you the general idea of how to take things that you already have left over from the collection you're working with and decorate. So I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pop that bit of glue and put this down. Then I cut this three by four because there's a little bit of yellow in the day. I took some of the yellow. So this is three by four. So this is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I'm going to mat this cut apart onto that. So I love this truck and it says summer blooms best day ever. So I'm just going to use my glue to touch this down. So mat that onto there. And now this is going to go here. And I'm going to put it at a very slight angle just because I like it. If you want it straight, then certainly do it straight. I'm going to do it at an angle but keep it within that uh, teal color or mint. I haven't decided if that's mint or teal. <laughs> so I'm going to angle this here and here. So it's at an angle but it's still within the, mostly within that blue. So I'm going to burnish that down. So that's the front side. So that's going to go on like that. Now on the inside, I just cut a photo mat out of some of the leftover pattern that I have. So this is three and a half by uh, two and three quarters. And I'm just going to attach it right here. Now it doesn't have any, it doesn't have a solid pattern piece of paper here. I'm letting the cardstock kind of be the background of this. Just like this. This you can put a photo here. Now then, make sure that's straight. Okay. So this is going to go inside the book right here. I don't want it perfectly on the edge. So I'm going to turn it over, put glue here on this back hinge. And also, your size may vary depending if you're putting photos in your book. 
uh, you want to cut it to accommodate your photos. I don't know yet what's going in here, so it's you can crop your photos to fit, but open this up. So we'll burnish this right here. Wipe off that glue. Then I cut a little strip. This is half inch by the length of this piece. So cut it the full length, five and a half, and that's going to glue over this hinge here. So I'm going to put it right here on top, not over the fold. You want to be able to keep folding, but you want to cover that half inch up. Kind of add a little decorative there. It brings in this one over here. So I was lucky I had that scrap still. Okay, so I'm going to burnish that. Now you can put a photo there. So that just closes up like that. And flip it open. So I'm not going to have a closure on that. This side here, I cut this cut apart. It's a three by four. And I'm going to attach it here, like for some journaling. And I'm just going to glue it on the right, back right side and the bottom. So you, I put my fingers so I know not to put glue there, just kind of like this. And I put some glue right along the edge. Not a whole lot, just a line of glue and across the bottom. Oops. You cut that off. I did it across the top. Great thing about glue, especially art glue glue, it will wipe off. So I've got it here on the side and I need it on the bottom. I turned it the wrong way. Even I get things mixed up sometimes. So I'm just going to attach it right down here. Kind of even with that. And then wipe the glue. So this is not a pocket, but it will allow you to put photo in there or tuck something in there that you might want to tuck in there. Now then, next I'm going to do something here on this side. So let me, uh, and I'm not done with these. I'm going to add some pretties to it also. But for right now I'm just kind of building things up. So I'm going to make a little flat pocket here on this side. So for this side, the flat pocket, I took a piece. Again, the sizes are going to depend on your scraps. This one is four and a half by three and a half. And I did use my envelope punch to punch a notch. Uh, so on this one, because it's four and a half, I put it at two and a quarter and I just punched, made one punch. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring in this green here. So I had a scrap that I cut down to four by three, which is a half inch smaller. Since it's four inches wide, I'm going to put this right at two. Just punch down. So it gives me the mat that matches that. So this is going to go right here. Okay. And just attach it all down unless you want to leave it open. But I'm going to attach mine down. Solid. It's going to be like a mat here for right now. <clears throat> so just line it up. Brush that. Now to make a flat pocket, I'm going to apply glue because <clears throat> the notch is the top, obviously to both sides, a line of glue, and along the bottom. And then that's going to go right down here, kind of center it. I'm just eyeballing it straight with those stripes on the sides. Stick it down. And then I took the three by four cut apart. So the one, this one here that has this pretty pattern on the back, it has the lemonade glasses in the uh, the opposite side. It has this nice black stripe with the flowers, and I just left them together, folded it in half, and burnished it. So this is a three by four photo mat tuck, and I'm just going to tuck it right into that pocket and let it flop like that. So right now those are the paper elements that I'm going to add and I will be adding some of these
stickers that came with the collection, the puppy stickers and these chipboard elements and all that to finish it all up. For now, that's what I want to do on this. I'm going to put this to tuck in. Um, I have one I want to tuck in there right now. Make a cut apart. I think I'll make a photo mat. So let me grab a piece of cardstock. And I am just going to trim this down to about three and a half by three and a half by five. Just like right there. Yeah, like that. And I'm going to finish the corners. So I'm going to I'm just going to stub punch these. And for now, I'm just going to slip that in. I don't know if I'll add any pattern paper, maybe a strip of paper or something to just decorate it up. So what we've got here. So you just have to look at all your scraps. That's the wrong direction. So I'll see here. So this will bring this in. So what I'm going to do, cut this down. About an inch, less than an inch, three quarters of an inch. Get it all off. So it's three quarters of an inch. It's big enough to wrap around. So I'm just going to glue it on one end. It'll be like a little belly band. Just glue it here on one side. And I'm not even worried about centering it. I'm going to take my scissors and just cut this other end off. If I can see it. And then put a little bit more glue on the opposite end. Catch it down. Make sure it's straight. Wipe off any excess glue. So now we have a photo mat. You can put a photo on both sides, but this just kind of decorates it up a little bit. So I'm going to stick it in this way. So we have some color right there on that. Okay, so I'm going to look it over again. I do want a magnet closure, and the way I'm going to do this is add extra cardstock flaps, which just adds to the interest of the book. So these will be in your cutting guide. The mats probably will not, but these will be. So you're going to cut one at four and a half wide by three and three quarters tall and score at a half inch on the four and a half inch side. Then the other flap is going to be three and three quarters tall, but you want it to be five inches wide score the five inch side at half inch so I have already added the magnets to check this out so I lined them up so that they're going to attach here offset on this cover and page just slightly this side's off this side's lined up so match up your magnets and use tape to keep them in place so we're going to add our pattern papers first so let me ink all these real quick. I've already cut them out and I will tell you what I cut pretty much. I just used whatever scraps I had left. That's how I determined what size I want to make my flaps, but I figured you might want to know the exact measurements of the cardstock if you want to make a magnet flap like this. Or you can plan ahead and put magnets in on these flaps before you do any patterned paper. Okay, so this side here is going to have, let me double check, this one right here. So you cut two for this flap that are three and three quarters wide by three and a half tall. So that's going to go right here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that on there. Pull this tape backing off my magnet. My magnets have some 
uh, paper on them because I had them on a prototype project before and then I took them off. I don't want to waste magnets. So I'm reusing some magnets here. So let's get this glue on this piece here and make sure we've got it right side up because this little floral piece does have some directional to it. So let's center this pretty good. Right there. And I'm going to burnish that down. And then go ahead and turn it over and put the other piece here. Make sure my directions are going right. Yeah, side base. So put that right there. You could use the bike side if you like to do biking. Put that right here. Okay, now the other side, I'm going to put this blue on this side, and these are cut, you want two that are cut four and a quarter wide by three and a half tall, so that's going to go right here. Turn it over, put the yellow instead of I'm use the solid yellow, so I'm going to pull this off. We'll see why, just a second here, I'm putting another mat on there of the campers. Had enough to cut out a little piece. So this goes over the magnet. So cut out this little piece here from the campers, whatever image you might have, a scrap of four by three and a quarter, and that's going to sit right there with a little bit of yellow border around it. So I thought that turned out cute. So get me some glue going here, and then we'll put these magnetic flaps on. So anytime you end up needing a closure, there's always a way somehow to get it on there. Might not be exactly what you had planned, but you probably may end up liking it even better. So these are going to snap together like that, so they match up. Let's bring my book back in here. I'm going to put this one on first. So it's going to line up. I'm putting glue on this half inch hinge of the back side and I'm going to line it up with the cut paper, the pattern paper, right about there. Just line it up nice and straight and burnish that. Got any excess glue, wipe it up. Okay, so this one attaches to this page. And this one's going to attach here. So you're going to match up the magnets. Then you're going to bring your side in, make sure it's squared up before you let the glue attach down. So glue on the hinge on the back. So let's bring this all together. Bring it up the top and the bottom, square it up. these pages line up. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this glue off where I had to wiggle it around. I'm lift up. And we got that hinge there. And now we're going to cover these like we did the other hinge. So I'm going to find some scraps, cut them to half inch of paper, and put them on here for the full length. I think that's what I did on the other one. 
yes I like the full length okay so I'm gonna cut those they need to be three and three and three quarters tall by half inch wide I cut my paper strips I use the stripe three and three quarters tall by a half inch wide so I'm gonna glue one to each hinge here to finish it off Make sure it doesn't go over the fold though. Nice and straight. And then the other side. Oh, there's the closure just like that so now we need to put some stuff here on the front to decorate this part up um, got the summer blooms with this chipboard piece back just to secure it put that in the center summer blooms and then I like this puffy sticker banner some glue on it too just just to secure just don't want it to come off and I'm gonna put it at kind of like this angle Okay, and with the Basque strawberries, happy summer. Got sweet summertime. Let me use that one. Okay. So now I'm happier. I've got a club magnet closure holding that in securely, and I'm going to center this right here. Okay. There's that part. Haven't decided what to do over here yet. There's that, and we still have some more areas to look at on the inside. I decided to add a seam binding ribbon bow that I made out of the ribbon from Country Craft Creations. So I tied a triple loop, just triple three loops on each side. And then for the ties, I tie them in a knot because it's going to ravel on you. And the knot helps make it look neater, and it's okay if the ends ravel beyond the knot and then I took my water spritzer spritz the ribbon up lightly and you just wrinkle it up and I roll it up in my hands don't get it real wet just enough to wrinkle it up and I'm going to open it back up now it's all wrinkly and it's going to glue right there where that banner is so I'm going to put some art glitter glue right there and it's going to Attach on. You can hold it for a few seconds. You can use a clip if you want to to let it really dry. Take its time while that's drying. I need to clean the glue off my fingers. I'm going to add a couple little flat back pearls. These are echo parts, uh, not flat back pearls, enamel dots. Echo part mom. I am mom. But the colors go with this really, really well. So I'm going to use a couple of pink ones, I think. And I don't want a whole lot of glue on there, but just a dot. More than I wanted. Okay. So I'm going to grab two of these, my scissors. And I'm just going to set it right there on the end. So it looks like they're being held on by... these uh, enamel dots, this little sign, and where I've got excess glue, I'm just going to wipe it off, 
I have too much, but our glitter glue dries clear, so like that. And then I think I want a bigger one here on my bow. Make sure you use glue on it to keep make sure it stays on. Okay, so like that, let all that dry and decide what I want to work on next. For the left side here, first on the front, whoops, I've got it turned wrong. Okay, here's the front. The campers, that's where the magnets are. So I cut these three by fours. So this is, um, this one is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'm going to mat this together. I like the yellow behind it, so I'm just going to put this right here. I'm just going to do the three, uh, one side, the left side on the back, and the bottom. That way, that leaves me the opportunity of sliding a photo in there if I want to. Just right here, right here. So that leaves it open, right in here. Then I'm going to flip it open, and I'm going to slide this down. Well, let's first do this one here. Cut this one. I'm going to just center this one in the center. I'm going to match. Never pass up an opportunity to enjoy the beauty of summer. And this mat's cut a little bit bigger, and it is three and a half by four and a half. I'm just deciding if I want the yellow. I think I want just yellow on that one, no dots. So glue on the back. I'm just going to glue it right there. Center it. From side to side, I centered it, but not so much top to bottom. But that's okay. I like that. And then I'm going to. Slide this down, and I'm going to put a tight belly band. Uh, this is five and three quarters wide by an inch and a half tall. Put a little extra glue here, about a half inch on the edge. And I'm going to center this here. Then I have two cut aparts that I inked best summer ever and everything good, everything magical happens between the months of June and August. And I'm just going to slide those in there like that. And then for here, I was thinking, I don't know if I want to put that happy summer there. Yeah, I think I will. This is a puppy sticker, so I'll put a little glue on it. And just kind of center it right here. I'm not going to put a picture here on this first flap, but all the rest of them I am going to leave plain pattern paper, no decorations on them. So that closes up. And that side is done. And I'm going to go ahead and look and see what else I want to do on the inside here. Got this one finished here, so this is ready to open up. Got this here and this here. I think I may just leave these plain for um, a picture or so, unless I want to use something here. 
I like the swing. So I think the swing at the top. It does have sticky on it. I just don't know how well it will hold. So I always put a little bit of glue on these stickers. So we'll put that right there. There's my a little bit too much right here. So wipe some excess off on the edge. So we've got the swing there. And maybe something down here. I don't know. I think on this flap over here, I'm going to use this puppy sticker right here on the top. Let's fold out just to bring those two together like that. And I hate for you to have to just wait on me to think. <laughs> I'm going to put the open one down here, the window. Okay, so there's still room for a picture there or here and here, like that. So and that kind of tells you to open it there. Let me slide it up just a little bit, maybe. Don't want to mess anything up, but just a tad. Yeah. So just okay, right there. So it says open. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to look it over here. We've got this on the inside. I like these the way it looks. Uh, this one I'm going to leave blank. For photos. This one as well. May put in some cut aparts. Maybe over here. And this um, This one just a little bit. Another tuck spot. At the bottom. We have we have a lemon sticker. I think they look cute right there on the bottom. So I haven't used any of these brads yet. Need to use some of those. There's a lemon one right there. It has sticky on it, but I'm just going to put a dot of glue. And I'm going to stick this bread like right here in the center. Yeah, I like that. It opens up. So we've got the lemons there. And this is just a lemon cut apart. And I think let me put it over here. On the right side and the bottom. We open this up and in our pocket. And like I said, I'm not going to put anything in here right now. I'm going to be making something for my other project for that. Um, I think I'm going to. Pretty much leave it blank on the inside. I may put a brad in here. This doesn't need a closure. Looking cute. I 
like these really big ones. Just that look. It's kind of funny there. How about this black one here? I'll put that one on there. It kind of looks like a closure there, so we left that open for the what I'm going to put in there. Um, don't have anything else to put on this. So do a double mat. Fun in the sun. Just like the lemons, but I like the fun in the sun too. So I need to straighten this up just a little bit. Someone get some yellow. I made this a different size, so I'm going to trim this down a little bit more to make it fit on this scrap of yellow that I have. So I found this scrap of yellow, and it measures three and a quarter by three and a half. So I trimmed down my three by four cut apart to just about two and a half by three. And I'm just going to glue it on here like this. So I'm going to glue it on the yellow. And an angle. And then this is going to go here. So I'm just going to glue it on the right side on the back and on the bottom. And then that touches there. So that leaves place like a pocket tuck spot there. And do I have another thread I want to put on there? Kind of like this one. Make sure they're not touching each other. So don't want to hinder each other or get hung. That'll be okay. So I like this with the flowers. Just kind of finish this all off right here. Okay, so I think the inside is probably done. I'm not going to add any photo mats. I could add a lot of those. I have some yellow here that I could stick back in there. I may cut that down to a photo mat. A booklet. It's five, I'm going to cut five inches. It's five inches by eight and a half. So it's four and a half at four and a quarter or just fold it in half, like a photo mat, and then fold it, burnish it really good, where you folded it, so that can just stick in there like that, if you have something you want to add to it, you could add, I'm going to just trim it, uh, trim it up a little bit, I kind of like it. so when you do it that way, if you just trim it up a little bit, if you kind of got it off, edges it'll be evened out so now that's a photo mat there you could add another cut apart if you wanted to I have this one that's kind of pretty so let's just glue that right there on the front okay so you can put photos inside and on the back. So that's pretty. Okay.
There it is. Whoops. This closes this way. There we go. <laughs> okay, forgot what I did. All right, so now all I need to do is finish the outside. I'll be at a ribbon closure. Doesn't actually need one unless you just want one. But I think maybe the red check will be pretty going across there. Okay. So we'll work on the cover I'm next. Decorating the front of my book. I did cut out from the uh, branding or advertising strip of piece of paper where it says Summer Market Cartabella I'm, and put a strip here on the back. Sometimes I like to label my albums that way. And I don't think I'm going to put anything on the spine for this one. I'm going to decorate just the front. So I pulled out several pieces of paper. I want to layer and cut them into layers. I have this cream colored doily that I want to put on there. And first I'm going to add ribbon closure. And I'm going to use all three ribbons. So I cut about a yard and a half of the yellow, the black, and the gingham red check from Country Craft Creations. And I'm going to use all of these for my closure. So I'm going to lay these out. I'm going to divide it about in half to get my halfway point. And that's going to go here on the spine. So I'm going to bring these to the front, wrap these around the back. I am going to use something to attach them to the front and the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie these into a bow to see how it looks or how it fits like this. Get the ribbons turned the way I want them. And then I'll just tie it. And I will probably crinkle these up after I get them all attached. Like that. Now I like to go ahead and tie the ends of all three together. Once I've got it where I want it, tie it in a knot. And that helps keep the seam binding ones from fraying too terribly bad. I'm just going to cut them at an angle. That on the end. side make sure you get all three ribbons in your knot Now that I have it where I want it, I'm going to center it top to bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over the back and then I'm going to grab something that I want to stick on the back to hold it down like, like this cut apart or a um, piece of paper with a sticker on it or chipboard. So let me grab some of that and see what I want found this scrap of paper and I cut it down to two and a half by three, inked the edges and added a puffy sticker. So this is going to attach right here over these ribbons. And since I have them where I want them, I'm going to glue the whole piece down. Now sometimes you can just glue where the ribbon runs through or on each side of the ribbon, let the ribbon run through free. But I don't want it coming loose, so I'm just going to glue it down just like that brush it down over the ribbons so that's the back turn it back over and now I'm ready to position this so the first thing I'm going to do on this cut down a piece of craft it's just a scrap of craft cardstock 
and I cut it down to about doesn't have to be exact three by three or so two and a half by three I'm gonna look here because I'm using this doily here but I want something over the ribbons to hold them in place so this is just like a holder piece a base piece Stick that down right there and hold those ribbons down. That way they're not going anywhere. Now that we have them there and we can kind of separate them a little bit here on the sides if you want to see all the colors. Just like that. Okay. So now I'm ready to put this doily. This is a doily I had I've, in my stash. I'm, it's a purchased doily. It's not a made one. And I'm using the kind of off-white so it doesn't blend in with the white background, but it kind of pulls the craft color. So I do use artisan glue, and I just put it in these solid areas. Pretty good amount. Because I'm going to be stacking on this doily other papers and elements so I want to kind of get dot around each of the edges here it's going to spread out okay so let's take this and lay it center it down kind of over it and press down. I use a, a dry wipe. Press down. Get some thread right here. I'm gonna clip off. Pretty sure this picked up at some of the craft stores. You can buy these that are already made, different sizes, different colors. But I've had it in a package laying here and I just hadn't used it yet. So you let all that dry, press down really good. And it the glue art glitter glue will dry and it will hold it on. Okay. So while that's drying, I have these pieces I'm gonna go ahead and layer up. So I cut a square of black cardstock just to scrap from some of your other projects. Four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of red left over from the cover um oops i got some glue right there i cover it up um so i'm going to use the red side so that glues down onto the black and i just wanted a very small margin of black so this red piece is four and a quarter by four and a quarter and this was four and Three eighths. I think I told you around four and yeah, three eighths. So I have it just a tiny margin around it. I'm going to use the glue. That layered down on there. See, it has a very tiny margin. This side's just a little bit bigger. There's that layer. Uh, next, I have uh, the kind of the aqua color, teal color. This one's three and a half by four and a half. And then I cut a yellow dot that is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm going to glue these two together. I'm just pulling out the colors that are kind of in the floral pattern paper, paper that's on the bottom there. Oops. Like that. Burnish it down. Oops. And then I have a three before cut apart. Happy summer days. And I'm going to put that right there and I need to ink just a little bit because I've been inking on everything on this. So let's go ahead and ink that. I'm going to sit that down, let it dry a minute. Go ahead and ink. I didn't ink the yellow, but that's okay. I'm 
this is going to go right down over the top of the yellow. Okay, so we've got those pieces, so let's grab the book again. Now this is going to go kind of like this. This one down first. I'm going to use a lot of glue on the back of it. This is going to stick down onto that dwelling and make sure there's plenty right there in the middle, especially. Burnish that down. Now this piece, I'm going to put it a little further down. And I need some lift right here on the bottom. And I'm going to use have some black chipboard scraps. I'm just going to cut a strip. I'm make sure I'm gluing it to the bottom right here. Let's see how much lift that gives me. Piece this. Put one here. Need another little snippet. We go. Let's see how that holds it up. Need another layer. This down. A little bit more here. Now let's see. Yeah, that will work. So we put glue on the chipboard and then also on the paper piece part. That's going to just attach like that. Okay, so now I have a little chipboard flower from the collection. And I'm going to add, I'm going to put some glue on it. Right up here in the top corner. And then I have this Sticky backed brad in with the red. That was pretty. I'm going to use that right here on this side here. Kind of like a button edge right here. Okay, and then I made <clears throat> a natural button twine bow. I have four loops on each side. And then I tied a little from Butterbee scraps, a little charm. This is a ladybug, which I identify with summer as ladybugs, a lot of ladybugs. And I'm just going to glue that right in there with those flowers. So put some glue right here. <clears throat> now, usually I use a lot of flowers 
on a, a cover. Occasionally you'll see that I don't. <laughs> so this one I'm just going to let it go with the chipboard flowers because there's lots of flowers here in this and I just want everything else to kind of show. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to decide if I want to put something in the center of that bow. So let's look at what we've got in Brad's. We've got some pretty pearl ones. And we've got this one with the flower in the center. So I'm going to use it. And I'm going to put it right there on the center of the bow. I like how that looks. I'm going to untie this and as I said I was going to scrunch it up just to be a little bit. It's going to get scrunchy anyway but make sure I don't get it on my book. Actually I'm going to put it on my hands and I'm just going to scrunch it this way. It doesn't have to have a lot of moisture to scrunch up that ribbon. That, that way I don't get it on any paper. I need to add some more of my fingers. I'm just going to wad it up and hold it. It's not enough to make it super, super wet. It's just kind of like finger pressing. If you've ever done any sewing where you do finger pressing. So I'm just going to scrunch and then I'll bring it out. Okay, there we go. So that finishes my album, my uh, box pocket folio. Uh, I like how it turned out. I like the front this way, the ribbons. Okay, so I will do a walkthrough video. It'll be separate from this tutorial video. I want to thank you so much for watching. For following along and if you're a subscriber I appreciate it, appreciate it so very much and if you're not I invite you to subscribe and also make sure you have clicked the bell so that you'll receive a notification of my next project be sure to check out country craft creations for the newest paper collections this one is currently available at the time of this recording it uh, can become limited so be sure and check that out right away uh, it is called Cartabella's summer market so check that out and also look for your ribbons and cardstock your artisan cardstock your adhesive we have the art glitter glue score tape score tape sheets and lots of other fun things like the brads and puppy stickers that go with the collection again thank you so much happy crafting bye bye <music>